Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I'm that from... is mine. No, no, these were mine. No, this is mine. F*** you. <laughs> There's supposed to be respect in the Asian culture. <laughs> yes. And you're f***ing laughing at us. Hey! That's f***ing paid for. Bring it back. You f***ed up. I've seen some people try to stick their nose <laughs> in the bottle. <laughs> mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> Let's talk about wine glass today, Peter. Okay. Is there any reason why you use uh, this kind of a uh, special glass? You have a bowl that is wider than the aperture. In other words, in a, a tulip shaped glass. And the reason for that is that you can pour it about a third to a half full and then agitate the glass. And then it's concentrated at the top so that the bouquet develops above the wine and is more concentrated at the top so that you can nose it. Uh, do I really need to grab the stem? You are going to get that wine into your mouth, uh. whether you grab it by the foot or by the stem or by the bowl or by the, the, the rim. <laughs> you are one way or another going to get the wine into your mouth. So need to know. But, I, I never grab the rim. <laughs> no, no, you don't? Oh, okay then. But in, in terms of the maximum enjoyment and also not to be perceived as a boor, Mm -hmm. by your dining companions, yes, the right way to hold the wine glass would be by the stem. In my case, I prefer uh, grabbing uh, the foot. I would sometimes do this, but usually not. I'm tasting a wine and I'm making notes on it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to make notes on a wine, first of all, I've got the wine in my left hand because I'm right-handed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it down on the table and I'm going to swell it like a... St if I'm holding it like this mm -hmm. and I'm making notes, then it's difficult to put... <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> put so it I tend not to hold it by the foot. Uh, okay. Yeah. You're likely to spill the stuff. Uh, the wine that Jay usually gives me, it's okay to spill. Mm -hmm. But the wine that I bring, <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Does glass size matter? So, like with everything, size matters. This, this is my standard glass today for tasting. Mm -hmm. Because this is a lovely size. That from is mine. Oh. That is my glass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely uh, glass mm -hmm. from, from many perspectives. It's the right size. It feels good. It feels elegant because the glass isn't thick. It's, it's uh, high quality without being a wine glass that if you break it, you have to go into mourning. I mean, it's elegant. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, what got quality mm -hmm. it's something you wish to drink out of mm -hmm. it's something that holds a reasonable amount of wine and still allows you the opportunity of agitating the wine so that you can look at it through the glass so that you can smell it etc let's get a glass that i would consider to be a um a very good glass all-purpose glass this is not quite there mm -hmm. there you go well, there is not that big difference, Peter. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So here, here we have a glass. So if you were to pick just one wine glass for your house wine, mm -hmm. this is the size and shape of glass I would choose. And I really want to know why you prefer a bigger glass. Oh, well, I think I explained that. <laughs> it, it holds more wine. <laughs> The opportunity here of pouring a little less wine, mm -hmm. leaving a free board of two thirds, mm -hmm. giving you ample opportunity to agitate the wine and develop the bouquet in plenty of space. So you will not be choking your red wines. Not that this will really choke your red wines, mm -hmm. but this will be better. You mean choking like... Yeah, it's like, oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. I think it was uh, attributed probably incorrectly, by the way, mm -hmm. to Benjamin Franklin, who mm -hmm. said that um, wine is a constant proof that uh, God loves us and wants us to be happy. Following along on that theme, we also have to do our bit for that wine to make us happy, which is to make the wine happy mm -hmm. by putting it in the right glass. Do you want to have some water? Why? <laughs> One should drink water only when no wine is available. Water rests you. I bring uh, more glasses to show you. Then bring them. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> this is the glass that's deemed more or less the uh, right shape for burgundy. Um, and some people would also prefer to use these for other quite aromatic reds such as um, Barolo, uh, Nebbiolo based wines. What else do we have? Oh, and the Lulus. <laughs> L look at this. Every single mistake you can make with the wine glass has been made here. Yeah. It's not tulip shaped, uh -huh. so it doesn't really trap the bouquet. It's got all sorts of Beautiful. etchings and, and uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. if the alternative was drinking it out of a skin made from a pig's bladder, <laughs> if that was a Lulu, now look at this one. <laughs> it's made of metal. Mm -hmm. It's heavy and cumbersome. Mm -hmm. It probably affects the taste of the wine almost chemically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then this. I bought uh, this glass for blind tasting just before Halloween. Blind tasting is difficult enough mm -hmm. when you can see the wine as it is in front of you. We don't have to make that more difficult with a glass like that. It should be used for just one night. Okay. When the kids come tricking or treating, you, you go out there with a glass like that, <laughs> show them the, um, the, the, skull. the skull and have them running away and you save candy. <laughs> Shall we taste wine? Yes, but let's get some of these abominable glasses off the table. <laughs> I see. What is this wine? Here? That's Brunello di Montalcino's baby brother, mm -hmm. Rosso di Montalcino at um, Cupano. This is 2004. We're talking about a wine that is uh, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Since these are all glasses that we have ascertained will hold liquid, mm -hmm. let's have some wine. <laughs> okay. Um, really reluctant to put this in the tumblers, <laughs> but okay. Would you taste? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. In which glass? Oh, you want me to taste to see if it's in condition? Mm -hmm. Wow, look at this color. Yeah. So the wine is very brown now. Um, and it's brown for two reasons. One, it's old and is probably getting to be beyond its best. And the other one is that um, uh, Sangiovese, uh, grown in Tuscany, of all grapes, starts off its life even when very young, with a slightly brown tinge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's drying out now, and it's going a little porty, and the fruit is starting to drop out in the middle. Mm -hmm. However, it's extremely elegant, mm -hmm. it's still a beautiful taste. So I have to serve uh, quickly? Not <laughs> like crazy, you know, that you spill the stuff, but yes. It was like an old gentleman at a party. Mm -hmm. You play the first jig, he gets up and he dances a jig, mm -hmm. but he's soon tired and needs to sit down again. And it's the same with this wine. Sorry about the mess. To think that you're supposed to be my protege and you're <laughs> spilling wine, uh, really have to rethink this relationship. <laughs> Is the quantity okay? More? Want some more? I notice you get <laughs> much more than me. Um, try, try the wine from this glass. It's actually very interesting. From the tumbler. The taste itself is okay, but I don't smell anything. The wine tastes pretty good. The problem for me, wine should gladden all the senses. It's not elegant. It doesn't make you feel special. Mm. Or, or it, does, it doesn't make you feel like you're treating the wine with the correct amount of reverence that this wine deserves, having been a prisoner trapped in this bottle for 14 years. Mm. I feel as if I'm drinking Dr. Pepper, but in the mouth, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's very good. See our nose, how different the nose is. Here there's almost no nose. No nose. So in terms of nose, they are really different. And in fact, uh, they're, they're becoming different as you go up to the larger bowl, therefore the larger size of aperture, but still the same kind of concentration. There's a very beautiful floral character here, almost like sweet violets. Mm -hmm. Or is that your dish detergent? <laughs> That's from my sweetest uh, part. <laughs> it must be the dish detergent. We have to wash his mouth out for being dirty. For a nose, for me, the uh, bigger glass, it smells uh, stronger than the smaller one. Come and taste some wine. <laughs> oh, come and taste some wine. <laughs>
<laughs> How are you? Hey, good, thanks. <laughs> so in terms of... Now, you see, that's what the problem is. The problem is your dishwashing. Yeah, you think yeah. so? Yeah, absolutely. That's, th those glasses smell of soap. Yeah, we got to start from scratch. Maybe that was the cloth that I used to mm. dry it. Because to, to wash the glasses, I didn't use her soap. So, okay, morning. it's the cloth. But you wash these two today now. Today morning? No, this no, these good. were mine. No, this is mine. Fuck you. <laughs> so what, here's your glasses. No, no, that's there. why we said this one was the best. <laughs> is there any glass uh, that I wash for you? You've done wa enough washing for the day. <laughs> so in terms of the glasses, Patrick, what do you think? So in terms of the glasses, when I nose through them, in terms of the, of the intensity of the aromatics, mm -hmm. I did, I did nose, nose through them. So it was yeah. uh, number one, mm -hmm. Uh, the larger of the tulip-shaped glasses, actually th this one's minimally tulip-shaped, the best of the tulip-shaped glasses. Number two, the burgundy glass. There's just a little bit of wine and it's a big bowl. Yeah. And people sometimes make the mistake of thinking they put a little bit of wine in this big glass, it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. That said, it's the second best. Third is this slight tulip shape. And fourth, in terms of the aromatics, is the... Uh, uh, Tumbler? Tumbler. Yeah. And I'm, I'm with you. So if I had my druthers, I would use this one. If I only had two different glasses in my home, this would be my red wine glass. This would be my white wine glass. Okay. And so he's a stingy guy mm -hmm. because my red wine and white wine glass, this is my white wine glass mm -hmm. and my red wine glass is <laughs> <laughs> over there. And it looks like this one. It's just bigger. You see, now, now people who don't have our affliction, uh, who have smaller noses, I've seen some people try to stick their nose <laughs> in the bottle. But obviously with either one of us, that is an, an impossibility. Yeah. I remember my grandmother once telling me that my grandfather lived to be 92 and he never used glasses. And I was completely amazed. He never I said, used glasses? Never used glasses. What did he, and did he use? I, and I was completely amazed. And I said, well, Grandma, if he, 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 you know, that's amazing eyesight that he never used glasses and lived to 92. What did he do? He said, no, she, he drank straight it's out the bottle. bottle. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand why you prefer Beagle glasses. <laughs> I have to check, for example, that, um, that the wine is breathing, right? Yeah. So we got it like this, is yeah. Oh my God, it's not breathing. What is required? Mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm the doctor. I should be the one making this joke. <laughs> in America, with all the germaphobes out there, it does guarantee you more than your fair share. Wine, I think we discussed on a previous uh, segment briefly, is um, a very, is, is a wonderful antiseptic. So it can kill off um, bac most bacteria that cause illness. It can kill off most viruses that cause illness including human papillomavirus or herpes simplex that you could pick up from passing things. The problem is, is that it needs about 40, 45 minutes of contact time to fully do that job. And so if you're just going from one person to another, um, it's gonna kill off some of the bugs, but not all the bugs. And does it mean uh, to clean your mouth? Do you need to hold uh, the wine in your mouth for 45 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, and the reason being is that, is that some of the wine, particularly if you keep on refreshing it, is staying, staying in your mouth. So you're always having some residual wine in your mouth. Um, and it kills, off, well, it kills off the vast majority of bacteria. Interestingly, but it doesn't kill off some of your oral bacteria, uh, be, uh, particularly the ones that love acid. So there's a certain type of acid-loving bacteria that can give you uh, cavities or bad breath. And so uh, wine doesn't fully cure all that. So you need to brush and floss. I'm loving the wine. You Which, don't use uh, your speed tune today. Speed what? <laughs> <laughs> he thought that there was a hole in it. He was concerned. When you drink wine of this quality, you don't speed tune. Let's do this with some more different wines. Oh, the landlord's going to be pissed what off. <laughs> the alternative is really bad. So, what? 
<laughs> Nothing. We're just, <laughs> we're bad, aren't we? Fucking whippersnapper. He sits here with two guys that are one MWs, mm -hmm. two senior to you, and they're supposed to be respecting the Asian culture. <laughs> yes. And you're fucking laughing at us. <laughs> no, I'm smiling at you. <laughs> That's different. So how would you say, how would you translate into Korean saying, you miserable American piece of shit. <laughs> I am laughing at you. <laughs> he says that to me every day. It's very easy to say. Peter Cox. <laughs> no, exactly. He know. put something online the other day. He didn't have a clue what, was, what he was putting online. Hey! That's fucking paid for. Bring it back. <laughs> Jeez. And with, and, you know, on a m much more serious note, right, besides our uh, juvenile... respect. Ah, okay. <laughs> About fucking time, pal. In, um, in Germany, per uh, particularly in some of the warmer regions. <laughs> you give me some. No, take out of there. <laughs> you fucked up. Thank you. That's, that's good. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so now we have the Sven Klund Riesling 2016 mm -hmm. from the Fals. <clears throat> it's from Kastanienbusch, but it doesn't have... Um, any of the normal things we would think of, you know, is it a qualitative wine? As it sits in the glass, and we're and we're and we're comparing the two glasses. You know, again, this glass I'm finding superior, the large, slightly larger one to the to the smaller one, and, and I think it's more that this is a slightly better tulip. But the classic Riesling in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, very seldom had any skin contact, mm -hmm. and now this wine does. It gives body. It gives increased body, increased uh, flavor, mm -hmm. and the price that you're paying for that is that you are getting some tannins on it. And I'm, I'm getting some uh, tannin on the finish. And in, in which class is it more beautiful for you? Do you Actually, I like them both, but it's it's better in the in the larger glass. And you as well? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 not only the aromatics, I, I prefer the flavor slightly in the larger glass as well. I just find overall with the the balance somehow in the in the larger glass in other words the shape of the larger glass is working for me it's not just the aromatics mm -hmm. which i believe here are uh, somewhat more complex and somewhat more gentle mm -hmm. than on this glass but overall the balance on my palate is such that i'm starting to feel like this wine glass is really doing its job it's bringing me this wine with the uh, sensor, sensory stimuli coming to my palate and my nose in the correct order and in the correct proportions. Mm -hmm. And the rim here is just a little bit thinner yeah. mm -hmm. than, on yeah. the, than on the other class. Yeah, it is, yeah. I'm enjoying very much drinking this now. Um, I would like to drink it later. Um, it's not a small wine, so, you know, sometimes Riesling is sort of lilting and almost ethereal. Mm -hmm. And, and just very easy to drink a whole bottle. Mm -hmm. This is a much more substantial wine than that. That's not a negative, but... Um, so you mean you couldn't I drink a to, bottle of this? I, I don't think I could drink a bottle. <laughs> could you drink two but bottles happy, of it? Happy to, <laughs> happy to share a bottle with you guys. I'm enjoying our, uh, <laughs> our cocktail hour here. Yeah, yeah, it's delightful. It doesn't really tell you, because the alcohol is 11 to 14%. Yeah, percent, so you can't really tell. No. Two I think to 14 person. Yeah. We do the label approvals for these guys. Mm -hmm. If it's like this, you never know it's really dry or off dry. No. And why don't you say this, Peter Koch? <laughs> in somebody's cellar, yeah. somebody's house, and now they've got Aunt Susie or mm -hmm. Uncle Tim <laughs> antigen. Uh, so, um, and saying, is it sweet or is it dry? Yes. The answer to which is yes. It's somewhere, well, somewhere like it's between 11 and 14% alcohol. Yeah. It's between zero and, fifth, and and 12 grams of residual sugar. Yeah, it's not yes, no question. Right? It's, the same, it's the same with the alcohol. Is it medium or high alcohol? Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's it is medium or high alcohol. Good. good question. You'll never be able to edit this. We're going to have to do this one again. <laughs> 이럴 땐이 와인 네이버 밴드로 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 편하고 싸게 살수 있는 정보가 많이 올라와 있습니다. 가입하는 게 싫으시면 greatwine2u.co.kr로 꼭 놀러 오세요.